Hi, I'm David Domke. I'm chair of the Department of Communication. A week ago, we started our podcast series where I'm going to have conversations with a variety of faculty, staff, alumni, students, just talking about really cool, exciting new things they're doing. And I'm very excited about this conversation. I'm joined today by Anita Verna Crofts, who is an associate director of our uh, communication leadership program and also teaches in a number of areas in the department. Thanks, Anita. It's good to be here. So what is this thing that you are launching? You've called it a flight instructor. What is that? Well, the flight instructor comes from the idea that uh, conversations I've been having with my colleagues at the communication leadership program, we have a philosophy in the way that we teach at the common lead program called Let Students Lead. And the idea behind, behind uh, Let Students Lead is that if you champion students to be to have accountability and to have real ownership over their time both inside the classroom and outside the classroom, that they can exceed expectations that they have for themselves and that you have from them. And the idea that if we as a department created a space where people and ideas could take flight, that that would be a remarkable thing. Okay, so where did this idea come from? Well, the idea came from, back in September, I attended an innovation workshop. And one of the case studies they put forward was a bank that had reinvented mm. itself to think beyond what a bank could be. And I thought, well, what if we did that at a departmental level? Mm. What if we thought at the department about students having both a diploma that expresses learning, but also a diploma that also embodies mm. values and the way that they build community here? And so I thought, how about it? I mean, flight instructor, it's a term that we all know. And I love the fact that it had instructor because that speaks to the academy. But what about being a department where that idea of how high can you fly is part of it as well? OK. Have you had people in your life who kind of served this role for you that like when you think about this, not naming names, but mm -hmm. they had certain attributes that, that were there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, whether it's um, an irrepressible energy and an, an approach to life that is uh, roll up your sleeves, we're going to put this on, we're going to do it. That idea that you never take no for an answer and that being very expansive in the way that you think and also just a sense of joy. And, and that sense, when you're up in the air, you see so much. I mean, there's so much to be excited about. And so I think that when I think back to people in my life that have motivated me, each one of them has added to that ability to think expansively about what it means to take flight. Okay, so let's think about this in the context of, uh, of the Digital Media Master's program that we now call the Communication Leadership Program, and also our undergraduate program. So you, just thinking back over the past year, you've taught in both of those programs. That's right. Um, so what would be an example of a flight instructor support you might have done for a communication leadership student, and one that you might have done for a, 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 one of our undergraduates? undergraduates? Well, let's start with the, with the Conley program because that's where I started in the department. And as I said, it really inspired the flight instructor because the first classroom I ever entered, entered in Conley, these are professional students. They're by and large working. And so there was no sense on my part that I was the owner of expertise in that classroom. Leadership and expertise was very diffuse. It existed throughout the classroom. And so that idea of how do you allow each person to own that expertise and contribute in the classroom I realize I'm speaking generally here, but that really inspired the idea that each person can lead and each person can contribute. And so the professional master's program exposed that to me immediately. Mm. But when I think about actually putting, putting it into practice, one of the things that I was able to do last year academically is create a, a class where we essentially formed an agency, a communication mm. strategy agency. And so every single student played a particular role. And while there was guidance on my part, they were very self-motivated. They, they met outside of class. They met with partners outside of class. There was a tremendous amount of autonomy that they enjoyed. And so I think that that expresses the idea behind leadership in the classroom that both is a curricular experience, but also builds the relationships and networks that we know our students need when they graduate, whether they're an undergraduate or a graduate student. At the undergraduate level, I'd have to say that the best experience that I've had so far, because I've only taught undergraduates once, but it was transformative because it was in Italy and it was part of our communication program in Rome. And when you think about what it takes to, as a group of 21 students, be in a foreign country, mm. uh, expose yourself and be open to those experiences that happen every day, even walking into a supermarket in Italy. Is, is, is an exercise in, in cross-cultural understanding. And, and I think there's also a part of flight that is a little bit of the risk, the risk of being up high. And so for me, being in Italy with 21 undergraduate students and my colleague was, a, it was an experience in, in, in asking yourself to step outside of your comfort zone, but knowing that your wings are gonna work when you're there. And so what do you, um, what's, what is a concrete goal 
that you have for a student? I've heard you talk about taking leadership in the mm -hmm. classroom, them, them beginning to imagine themselves in potential in new ways. Mm -hmm. What would be something that if I was an undergraduate student or a comm lead graduate student sitting here, I'd say, well, this sounds really great. Um, what's one thing I'm gonna take away from this? Mm -hmm. I just wrote a blog post for Flip the Media, which is the blog that our graduate program, Com Lead, puts out. Again, student run, another good yeah. example of, of letting students lead in that field. And the, the idea behind the blog post is that it's not just making the grade that matters in your academic career, it's also how you pound the pavement and make connections and build relationships. And my message as the flight instructor in this department, doesn't matter if you're an undergraduate, doesn't matter if, matter if you're a graduate student, one of the things that I want to instill, and I know that as a department we do very well, is making that bridge between the classroom here on campus and then the community at large. And so I think that the flight instructor's role is to imagine that not only do we need to build community here as, an, as, an, as a department and instill that idea of faculty, staff, and students being part of something larger, but also thinking about how we convey to students that their success in the classroom is dependent upon their success and ability to engage with the community at large, build relationships, and see their future contributions within their career as ones that they start from the minute they join this campus. And that we at the Department of Communication can help foster that ability to network, that ability to put themselves out there, to engage with the community, whether it's through our alumni relationships or just being opportunistic, being inventive, being, being thoughtful about the ways that you can meet people now. It's not limited to in person, geography is not a barrier. That's something that the Master of Communication and Digital Media program has taught me. You're not limited by your place any longer. Your communities can expand. And as a flight instructor, I'm here to remind students that they're only limited by their own lack of creativity. And I'm here to say that everyone's got that element of creativity. Everyone's got that element of curiosity. And I want people to graduate feeling as if they are the, the ninja relationship builder and that they understand that it's, it's, it's a skill that's going to serve them so well as they move through the world. Yeah, and do you find that students are ready to go with you? Oh, I, I mean, what you do is you create that unbridled enthusiasm that makes people want to join your team, makes people, people want to be with you. I, what I, one of the things that I've loved since getting back from Italy is I, I work upstairs on the second floor. We've got a suite and I share that suite with two of my colleagues and it's not very, it's not uncommon that there'll be an undergraduate that I went to Italy with who comes in, stops by, sits down, wants to talk, wants to strategize and my other colleagues, they pop their heads in because they know that the relationships that start in Italy, they extend here. I'm in their corner. I'm in that student's corner for the rest of their days. And so you, you bring that enthusiasm. You show students that you're showing up shoulder to shoulder with them. They will go with you all the way. They'll run through walls. I love that. So unlike Vegas, what happens on the, <laughs> what happens on the UW campus doesn't stay on the UW campus, no, right? No, it goes off. We want it to go off. I mean, this is, we want to share our light. We want to make sure that people know about the good work. And we want to make sure that when our students go out there, they are known as calm grads. It's something to be deeply proud of. Yeah, so I, I'm Facebook friends with, uh, with a student who was in the first class I taught at University of Minnesota in 1996, right? And we stay in contact with each other. And it's amazing to me to see how his career has developed, right? Absolutely. And and then, but then we're also connected in a different way. We're, we're hockey fans, mm -hmm. and in the Northwest, that's pretty uncommon, right? I'm sorry so about you, the Red Wings. Yeah, man. thanks for bringing up the Red Wings. <laughs> uh, but the reality is that you know these connections, these relational connections, um, are every bit as important as maybe the content you learn in a class. Absolutely. The two are really the size of the coin. I mean, you want to have that intellectual stimulation, and what better place to have it than this than this department. I mean, we have the brightest, the brightest, the best on this campus here. But at the same time, as you say, the relational, that's a lesson that our students, they crave, they, they excel at that, and they're, they're communication students for a reason. They, they enjoy and they appreciate and they, they thrive in that ability to connect with people, and so, so important. So how, how have um, other faculty who have seen this title, flight instructor, responded to this? Because this is not a normal f title around here. It's not, and, and I feel like this is my moment, it's nascent, and so this is my moment to start to prove myself. I mean, I think that there's a tremendous sense of goodwill, but at the same time, even though we may create dynamic learning environments, the academy is traditionally one that is perhaps a little bit more tied to, uh, to the glacial pace of change. <laughs> and so, and that's maybe putting it diplomatically, but what I've been happy about is that here I am in a department that has had to reinvent itself in the, in the, in the most, you know, the recent, the recent past, the last 10 years. And so I think that there is a, a leap of faith and grace that people are able to give me, but at the same time, it's a, 
I've noticed this with not only my colleagues, but friends of mine that see my LinkedIn page change, mm. they see my Twitter handle change, and the first question they have is, when did you get your pilot's license? But then that opens up the door for me to be able to say, oh, everybody has their own plane. I'm just teaching people how to fly their own. That's great. That's great. So let's just do a couple um, kind of quick quick hits, a couple questions for you. So it's like a uh, rapid fire round? Yeah, a little rapid fire round. So <laughs> hit me. Um, so uh, what, what's, the, uh, what's the most important thing for a student to, to walk out of the UW with? Come on, one or two just quick traits. Curiosity, unbridled creativity, and I would hope too that they majored in something that they're truly passionate about. Okay, what's the most important thing for you to be as an instructor? A good listener. What's the most important thing for um, a communication program to, to be offering to either undergraduates or graduate students in 2013? The most important thing for a communication major to be offering graduates or undergraduates in 2013? Oh, that's a great question. <clears throat> that's why I'm chair. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many reasons. Uh, let's see, the most important thing. I would say that the most important thing that, oh, I don't want to come off like I'm just. We have, what, that we should have a flight instructor? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 I was thinking curricularly. Um, I'm going to say that a, you know, I'm going to go back to our faculty meeting yesterday. One, I, I sent Randy Beam a note because I think that the course that he's looking at that looks at the, kind of, the idea of having a portfolio yeah. and having a, a focus on your time, not only during your four years as an undergraduate, but how that's going to then provide you traction and momentum as you graduate. I don't think that you can... You, you cannot put a price on how important it is for students to graduate with a sophisticated and a thoughtful digital footprint in terms of what they've acquired over the course of their time here, but also seeing how that then translates into, into the community and, and into their next phase of career. So I, I love the fact that as a department, we are already thinking when the students come in about how we're going to set them up to be successful professionally when they graduate. What's the most important emotional attribute for a person to have to succeed in our professional world? Compassion. How come? Because I think if you're compassionate, you are always able to put yourself in the shoes of others. And that, that framework is often one of um, finding the shortest distance between two people. And so as we're solving complex problems, which we face every day regardless of what field we're in, the complexity becomes surmountable when you see what you share with someone else. Mm. And so that compassion, I think, fuels that kind of um, that empathy that leads to feelings of solutions are, are actually on the near horizon. Okay, so as a flight, so as this, we have this flight instructor role in the department. Now, are we going to kind of wrap this up? Are we yeah. going to, um, how are we going to bring this to the knowledge of our students? How are they going to know about this? What, what are the things that you think we should do? Well, one of the things that I'd like to do is make sure that as we move towards a more intentional relationship with our undergraduate student population in the form of orientations, I'd like to be part of those. I'd like to introduce the idea of the flight instructor as students enter the department so they know that I'm a resource, so that they know that this is a philosophy that we have at the department. I'm also going to be spending time down in the uh, advisor's office because I see my role as one of championing students at all levels. Hmm. Um, I think that there's also a responsibility that I have to make sure that I'm visible in the department, I'm visible in the way that I talk about being the flight instructor, but that I, I don't just talk it, but I walk it. One of the things I'm really proud of is that I know the name of everyone in this building, from the person, you know, from Nagisti, who cleans my office, to you, the chair. I mean, these are, this is my community. And so I want to manifest that in the way that I see mm. being a flight instructor is about building that community and involving the students in this process. For instance, Community isn't just how you engage with individuals, it's also your, the space that you have as well. And our students have tremendous ideas. Doesn't matter their age, doesn't matter their background, everyone can contribute. And if I can build these forums for people to contribute, that's going to promote the kind of work that I want to do and the kind of things that I want the flight instructor to be associated with. Okay. And, and what's your favorite food? <laughs> you know the answer to this. Pie. 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 <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, have you ever shared pie with your students? I have often shared pie mm -hmm. with my students. It tends to be their reward at the end of the year, and I also have been known to pay my guest speakers in pie. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a, I mean, one of the great things, in all seriousness, Anita, that I treasure about your presence in the department is your, 
you live it out, right? It's not just, hey, an idea. It's a, it's a wholeheartedness. And so the flight instructor thing that you're bringing to, to us really is transformative. I can't wait to see how this impacts students. I already see it. I already am seeing it impact students. Um, and I just, your enthusiasm is incredible. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So that's just one slice of the Department of Communication, to use the pie metaphor. And let us now take off to the next stage in our flight instructor role. So thank you for joining us today. Good day.